In this video I'm going to be talking about photosynthesis. You probably already know that photosynthesis has got something to do with plants. Now we know that plants are autotrophs which means that they make their own food. And we also know that plants need water and sunlight. We know that plants are good for getting rid of carbon dioxide in the air and we know that plants put oxygen back into the atmosphere. You've probably guessed that all of this is somehow related to photosynthesis. Put simply, photosynthesis is the process that plants use to convert solar energy into food energy. It's actually a chemical reaction, which is a fancy science way of saying that it converts one set of substances into another. We start with carbon dioxide and water, and using photosynthesis, we convert those into oxygen, water, and glucose. Now, we can write this process down in something that's called a word equation. We start by writing down the set of chemicals that we start with, which in this case is carbon dioxide and water. Then we draw an arrow and write down the chemicals that we end up with. By the way, when we use the word chemical in science, that doesn't mean it's some horrible nasty toxin. In science, a chemical is simply any substance that's got a set composition and certain sort of properties. Water, oxygen, carbon dioxide and sugar are all chemicals, but they're all mostly harmless. Anyway, our word equation isn't quite finished yet. We've written down all the chemicals that we started with, and all the substances that we ended up with, uh, but what we haven't written down yet is all the things that we needed to help make this chemical change happen. We know that plants need light for photosynthesis, and so to show that light is needed, we write that above the arrow. We're almost there now. There's one other thing that we still need for photosynthesis. Think about it. If sunlight was the only thing that we needed to make photosynthesis happen, it would be happening everywhere, not just in plants. There's a special substance called chlorophyll that's found only in plants and algae. And it basically works like a little solar powered machine that rearranges the atoms in carbon dioxide and water so that they become oxygen and glucose. So we write chlorophyll above the arrow too. And now our word equation is done. The things on the left side of the arrow are what we start with. The things on the right side of the arrow are what we end up with. And the things above the arrow are what we need to make the chemical change happen. Now, you might be scratching your head at this stage and saying, hang on, if water goes in and water comes out, then is the water really changing? Shouldn't we just put water above the arrow to show it's something that we need to help the change to happen? Not exactly. You see, we actually only end up with half as much water as what we started with. And the water molecules that we end up with aren't even the same ones that we started with. They're freshly made. I can explain this a little bit better by showing you how the chemical equation for photosynthesis works. Now, a chemical equation is like a word equation, except that instead of using words, we actually write the chemical symbols for the substances that we're looking at. This is the chemical equation for photosynthesis. On the left side, we've got six molecules of carbon dioxide, or CO2, and we've got 12 molecules of H2O, which, as you know, is water. Now, then we use chlorophyll and sunlight to take all the atoms in those molecules, and we rearrange them, and we end up with one molecule of C6H12O6, which is the chemical symbol for glucose. We also get six molecules of oxygen, or O2, and six newly made molecules of H2O, or water. There's one last thing we need to talk about for photosynthesis, and that's energy. Plants and algae can use light energy from the sun for photosynthesis, but there's actually loads of other things that plants and algae need to do that they can't use light energy for, such as growing and repairing cells and opening and closing their flowers. For all of these things, plants and algae actually need energy in the same form that all other living organisms do, and that's chemical energy or food energy. And I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. Plants couldn't depend on light energy for everything because otherwise they'd just stop working and drop dead at night. Now this is why photosynthesis is so important. Photosynthesis converts energy from the sun into food energy. The energy is actually stored in the chemical bonds that hold together the atoms in glucose molecules. When those bonds are broken, the energy is released, so it can power the organism. The process of releasing energy by breaking apart food molecules such as glucose happens the same way in all living things, whether they're plants or animals or bacteria. This process is called res respiration, and I'll talk about that in the next video.